Welcome to a new video in my home automation series. Many of you ask me questions once I've released the Blitzwolf uh, Zigbee videos, if they work with the uh, Sonoff products or the Sonoff gateway. And my answer was that yes, it should be working because Zigbee free standard uh, is not specific to any vendor. But I always said that I haven't tested it. So now today I tested it. I linked the Blitzwolf door sensor and the Blitzwolf motion sensor to the uh, Sonoff gateway. And if you are not interested in the whole video, then the short answer is that the door sensor works. As you can see, I open the door sensor and it operates one of the output on this Sonoff 4CH. And if I close it, then this closes. So I was able to set up some scenes where, so I was able to set up scenes where the Blitzwolf unit controls the 4CH. And actually you can see the device here. So that's the Blitzwolf door sensor. And you can see the opening and the closing events. But on the other hand, the motion sensor is not working. I can't really figure out why. If you see the sort of motion sensor, it looks like, if you see the icon, it looks like a, you know, like a person and these rays radiating away from it. But if I go into my bridge, you can see that I have added the Blitzwolf motion sensor here, but it is not recognized as a motion sensor. So it has a same icon as the Zigbee button. And if I go into it, there are nothing. So there are no records of, there is no motion detection or there is no motion detection which appears as a button click in this device. So even though it's getting recognized, it goes through the pairing process, it gets added to the son of gateway, it is yeah, pretty much unusable. And you have seen this previously that I've received a motion trigger that was like a flash of the status red LED, but actually there's nothing here in the app. So it is very unfortunate because I was almost, you know, sort of like 90, 95% that everything is going to work. And um, I really can't figure out why it is working for one of the units and not the other. I mean, of course it's communication and standards, but um, I'm guessing sort of could still decide to either block this device or, you know, maybe the standard is not that strictly followed on the Blitzwolf unit and therefore the Sonoff unit can't recognize it. Well, I mean, we can debate about this all day long. It's not going to change the fact that you will not be able to use the Blitzwolf motion sensor with a Sonoff ecosystem or with Sonoff products in the EVLink app. But anyway, if you are interested in these details, stick with me and I'm going to take you through the whole process. Before we start pairing the devices, let me just show you the automation that I've done. If the Sonoff motion sensor detects motion, it's going to turn on this output for five seconds. And if the door sensor is open, then it's going to open the second output. And when it's closed, it's going to close it. So this is how we are going to test the automation. And just be aware, because the Sonoff motion sensor has a delay between re-triggering, it's actually not, you know, setting at the moment because it just triggered um, probably like half a minute ago. So most probably we are going to see this one going off at a random interval. So I've done the setup of these scenes. You can see them here and a few others. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my devices and we will try to pair the Blitzwolf devices to the gateway. So I just need to find the gateway. It should be somewhere here. Yeah, Zigbee Bridge. So that's my gateway. Okay, I'm just going to set it here. And I think I'm going to start with a Blitzwolf unit. So I'm going to open this up and reset it. And at the moment it's paired to the Blitzwolf gateway. So I'm going to reset it so it blinks. Okay, it is blinking now. And on my phone, I'm just going to go to add here. And now the Sonoff gateway is going to look for this Blitzwolf device. And oh, one device is found. Let's see how it looks like. And it says device something, something, something. And let me go into the settings and then rename it. So I'm going to rename it as Blitzwolf door sensor. And also change the location. So I'm going to put it into the living room, just like all, where all my other devices are. And if we just wait, and then hopefully where it is. Yeah, Blitzwolf door. And it is recognized as a door sensor. So now it's open. And if I close it, 
it will get closed. I think I need to go out and then go back in and now it's closed. Hey, that was easy. So this is working. Okay, let's do the same with the motion sensor. So again, I'm going to click here and press the reset button. Okay, now it's blinking. Okay, quickly go back to the gateway. I, where is my gateway? No, somewhere here. So that's my bridge and add. And now the son of bridge is looking for this Blitzwolf motion sensor and it's found. Good, and it's a nameless device. And let me just change the name as well. So this is going to be Blitzwolf Motion. Okay, save. I'm going to put this into the living room as well. Okay, save. And if I go all the way up, well, we can already see a lot of history when motion was detected. Okay, so we have both of the Blitzwolf motion and the door sensor now here in, the, in our EV-Link app. Let me just quickly set up a scene so we can see these two units also controlling this 4CH. So I think first I'm going to deal with the motion sensor. So if smart device Blitzwolf motion, hmm, it says click, double clicked, long pressed. Hmm, okay, let's pick clicked. I don't think it should be telling that. So in the actions, smart device, 4CH. So that's going to turn on channel 4, sorry, channel 3. And then I will also add a very short delay of 10 seconds. And then it also going to turn off channel 3. Okay, so when, okay, let's just rename it. Blitzwolf motion and channel four channel three okay now if motion is detected that should activate this output for 10 seconds so let's see let me just create the other action in the meantime so smart device blitzwolf door on okay that looks good and smart device 4ch and i'm going to operate channel four on this one so that's my Blitzwolf door and turning on channel four. And I also need to create one where it's going to turn it off. And that's going to be, again, the trigger is smart device, Blitzwolf door sensor is off. Then my smart device channel four should be off. Okay, let's save it. Blitzwolf door sensor and channel four off. Okay, so let's try the door sensor first. Turns on channel four. Okay, so that's working. And of course, the son of one is still working. Uh, okay, so now I just need to go away and then hopefully I can trigger the motion sensor. Maybe if I walk outside and if I come back in, we will see that that's going to trigger. Okay, so I don't think that this motion sensor is working. The fact that it shows events which is consistent with the button, it doesn't look like that it's doing anything, even though it is showing the icon of a motion sensor. No, actually it is showing the icon of a button. So whereas the son of motion sensor shows up as, you know, this icon, the Blitzwolf one, it shows up with the actual button icon and I don't see anything in the records. So it looks like that the Blitzwolf unit is sending a different type of message which the son of gateway doesn't understand. So if I look at, um, you can see the red LED flashing and if I look at the motion sensor, the Blitzwolf motion sensor, there is nothing. It is not being recognized as a motion sensor and therefore the, the message is sending through. It's not registering correctly in the EV-Link app, unfortunately. 
By the way, I deleted this device and as you can see here, I tried to pair it again. I was hoping that maybe something has gone wrong in the pairing process. But again, even for the second time, the Blitzwolf motion sensor is getting recognized as a, some sort of button. And even though it is detecting motions, because I can see the red LED, there are no records. So it, it is basically unusable in the EV-Link application. That was all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.